of nature fruitless be compared with Christ the apple tree. His beauty of all things excel. By faith I know but ne'er can tell. His beauty of all things excel. By faith I know Yeah. 
whom shall I fear? I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. Let us pray. We join together with Christians everywhere, O oh God, this day. Drawn by the gift of Christ's life in our behalf. May the blood of Christ atone for all our sins and make us brothers and sisters with other Christians around the world today. Grant that our oneness with other worshipers may lead to greater opportunities for the gospel and that the kingdoms of this earth may soon become the kingdom of our Christ. For it is in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please stand for the opening hymn and remain for the uh, Apostles Creed. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody doing okay? I know the crud's kind of running through the church. So just making sure everybody's doing all right. I've been calling on some people, and I know that um, we've got kind of flu-ish type stuff going through this through the church. So just be in prayer for one another. Um, but what else can we be in prayer for this week? people that were going through this, that went through the storm. Yeah. And all of the lives that were lost. 
their families are suffering. I have a friend in the Black Mountain region. Um, she lives in the city of Black Mountain. She was in her home when it was hit by a rock slide and the whole house came down on top of her, the, her common-law husband and a friend of theirs and their dog. Um, their friend perished um, in the slide. Um, her common-law husband um, was pushed out to the side, saw where she was and was able to dig her out. Um, she does not have, she, her legs were crushed from the knees down. So she is in the hospital and she has a long road ahead of her. Um, but the rescuers, when they pulled them off the mountain, said that they were the only survivors that they had pulled off the mountain all night. So just be in prayer for not just Asheville, but the surrounding area. There are a lot of small towns outside of Asheville that have been devastated um, by the rains and the landslides that have happened because of that. Um, Sardis, do I have that right this time? Sardis Trucking? Southen. Southen Trucking. Siphon. Siphon. Siphon Trucking. Oh, I'll get it right someday. Siphon Trucking, they sent five loads of trucks of supplies um, last week um, to South Georgia and to the North Carolina region. They got them to churches designated in those areas. They have a church in South Georgia and a church in the Carolinas that they've been working with. And they got calls on Thursday and Friday saying that all of those supplies had been dispersed and they were in need of more. So if you are out and about and feel called or led to buy an extra case of water or diapers or wipes and to take them over to the trucking company and drop them off, they are going to reopen those trucks again on Monday. Um, so they will be receiving uh, non-perishable goods to make sure they get them where they need to be. We know that there are drops that are happening um, all throughout the region, um, but we also know that there are people that are taking things um, in a not so light way. Um, so just be in prayer for everybody in the area that they find a way to pull together and continue to pull together. I know the churches up there are working. Um, I didn't talk to Lindsay, but I talked to her mom who also lives up there on Tuesday. And um, she said that the churches have pulled together and the churches are doing a great job working together to make sure supplies are dispersed to those that are in need. Um, but supplies are limited. So just prayerfully consider how you may be able to help them um, in the days and weeks ahead. Anybody else? Uh, Lindsay, like Augusta, was also hit very yeah. badly, uh, only that the water didn't. It was wind, and Lindsay lost a friend that a tree had fallen out of her house and killed her. So it's like, you know, yeah. when it's not expected like that. Yep. I've had a terrible week. And I you know, always I can't always say that I usually have really good weeks, but it's been really rough. I've been sick and I uh, lost a friend, so I've been at home sick and sad, and watching probably more news than I would normally. It's dark. It is. There's a point where I can't watch it anymore. It's dark, and I found myself questioning, you know, why. It's hard for me to read about two twin babies dying in the bathtub with their mother, seven-year-old and four-year-old burning up in their house. Yeah. It's hard. Um, and I probably shouldn't be here today because I'm clearly... <laughs> <clears throat> still, you know, cruddy. But I'll, all I wanted to do was come today and sing. Well, I'm glad you're here because this is a place of healing. Well, and it might be my last chance. You know, you never know. Yep. I mean, you honestly never know. You don't. You don't. But God is good and He allowed us to be here this morning. He did. He gave us a place where we could come and where we could be in shelter. And we have air conditioning. We have running water where we can worship together. Um, I do have a praise. Um, the North Georgia Conference has sent a, I think I shared this with you last week, I knew about the solar trailer going down to the Valdosta area. So that solar trailer is down there supplying 
power to some freezers and um, big refrigerators um, and to a church that's allowing people that are there through UMCOR um, first responders to go and shower and um, tend to their needs um, while they're down there helping people in that region. So that, that's great to know that we have a solar trailer as a conference that we are lending to another conference. We also have, and a lot of people don't know this, but we also have a new um, water truck um, that will make water and cleanse water. And that truck trailer has been sent to the Carolinas um, and is on loan up there. So that truck or that trailer left. Um, they were looking for a driver and got an immediate response. Um, our UMCOR coordinator posted that on Facebook. He lives in the Augusta area and he hasn't had power until I think just a couple days ago. Um, and he's been trying to coordinate all the efforts in an area that is a disaster area. Um, so he said that that trailer was more needed up in the North Carolina region and that they were doing okay, that they were going to get power back, but North Carolina may not have it for a while. So fresh water trailer has been sent up there to help those people up there. So those are good things that are happening in the midst of chaos and despair. And I wanted to make sure that I shared that with you, that while it's small, it is something. And we can take every little bit that we get. Anybody else? All right. Yes, ma'am. Andy Witt. Yes, ma'am. Andy Witt did pass away yesterday. He was former um, pastor over at Red Wine and Sardis and a beloved member of this community. And he fought a good, long, hard fight. Um, but be in prayer for his family. He has a daughter who's a senior in high school. Um, you know, so his family is fairly young. I guess his kid's mom passed away when they were significantly younger, um, when they were at church. Um, so just be in prayer for those kids, and, well, young adults, really, um, as they mourn the loss of their father. Yes, sir. Our son-in-law, Mark and Darren, um, had surgery Friday and he's home. And he's about all we you know he's doing well, okay for him to go now. Okay. Let's also pray for everybody in our congregation that is out sick today. Um, or traveling, just for various reasons. But let's just be in prayer for them. Anybody else? All right, let us pray. Loving and merciful God, we gather before you today grateful for the gift of community and the blessings that flow from being a part of your church family. God, we come from different walks of life, each carrying our own burdens, our own joys, and our own challenges. Yet here, here in the sacred space, we find unity in your love and your grace. You show us your love, Lord. As we prepare to reflect on the sacred gift of communion, we are reminded of your Son, Jesus Christ, who offered himself to us, pouring out his love on the cross. In this time of worship, we gather with grateful hearts, thankful for the sacrifice that's brought us life, forgiveness, and hope. God, as we reflect on the bread and the cup, we remember the body of Christ, broken for us, and the blood of Christ poured out for the forgiveness of sins. We pray that this time of communion would remind us of the depth of your love and your power and your grace. May it also strengthen our connection with one another, not just in this church, but out into the community. We gather here today, not just as individuals, but as one body in Christ. God, we lift up those in the midst, in our midst who are struggling today, those who are sick, those who are facing loss, and God, those who just are facing uncertainty. 
God, our world is a hurting place. And we need you. We need you today. God, we ask for you to, will we lift up the loved ones that are still missing from the destruction caused by Hurricane Helene. God, it's left a path of destruction that is unimaginable. God, we ask for your provision for the people who lost so much during the storm. God, give them your protection, your provision. And God, I ask that you give them your peace in the midst of all the chaos. Guide us, O oh Lord, as we prepare our hearts for this sacred meal. May we be filled with your love and sent out to share it with the world that is broken. Lord, let us see where we can make a difference, no matter how big or how small. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. If you haven't read the upper room for today, it is about communion. I read it this uh, morning about 12.33 a.m., so it was early. But it, it does speak of communion. You stand and sing? Yeah.
but through that communion, they found healing. They found nourishment. And they found the assurance that God's grace reaches us wherever we are in any circumstance. As I reflected on that story, I realized something. The table of the Lord, it is a place for all. I talk about that as we celebrate communion, that this is an open table. It's one of the things that I love about the United Methodist Church. So all you have to do is come with a repentant heart. The table is a place of the Lord. And it's a place for all. For those who feel whole. And for those who feel broken. When we gather for communion, we're reminded of Christ's words at the Last Supper that I just shared with you in 1 Corinthians 24 and 25. This is my body broken for you. This is my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus didn't just invite those who had it all together. He didn't come for the righteous. He came for the sinner, for the lost, and for the broken. I don't know about you, but I am a sinner. I am lost in the ways of a dark world right now. <coughs> I feel broken because of it. At the heart of the Lord's table is also remembrance. This charge to remember Jesus, it's just, it was Jesus who commanded in Luke 22, 19, do this in remembrance of me. And you'll find it if you can get past the altar rail on the front of the altar. Do this in remembrance. But what exactly are we remembering? Have you ever thought of that? What is it that God wants us, and what is it that Jesus wants us to remember? We remember his suffering. The broken bread represents his body torn and battered. But his suffering, it began long before he ever got to the cross. It began with betrayal and denial and abandonment of his friends. He endured the physical agony of beatings, the crown being forced into his skull, and then the nails being driven into his hands and his feet. As we partake in the bread, we are called to remember his sacrifice, the physical pain and emotional suffering that he endured for us. We remember his death on the cross. The cup symbolizes the blood of Jesus poured out in a violent death. Jesus didn't die from natural causes or from a tragic accident. He was executed for a crime that he didn't commit in one of the most brutal forms of execution the world has ever known. So as we drink the cup, we remember that Jesus willingly went to the cross to bear our sins. And we also remember why he did it, for the forgiveness of sins. The cross wasn't just an unfortunate event in history. It was the fulfillment of God's plan to redeem humanity. Jesus' death was a sacrifice, one made for each of us, so that we could be reconciled to God. When we take communion, we remember that his sacrifice was for our sins, and that through his death, we have been forgiven. Yet communion is not just about remembrance. 
It's also about celebration. It's also about celebration. It's a celebration of forgiveness that we've received through Christ. It's easy to dwell on the cross. But communion is also a joyous occasion, my friends. Through Christ's death and resurrection, we're no longer separated from God. We have been invited into a relationship with him. Not because of anything that we've done, but because of his grace. A grace that he gives to us freely. Communion invites us to marvel at the grace that we've been shown. As we gather at the table, we come not because we've earned a place, but because Jesus, Jesus invited us to this table. He invited us to come. It's not about deserving, but about receiving the gift of salvation. This table is an open invitation to come, to be fed, to be filled with grace that only Christ can offer to us. But that's not all. The table is also a place of fellowship. It's where we come together, not just as individuals, but as the body of Christ. That's the symbolism of World Communion Sunday. There are people all over the world that will take communion today, together, in community, not as individuals, but as the body of Christ. We eat the bread and drink the cup, so, and we do so together. When we do this, we're reminded that we are one body, connected by our shared faith in Christ. Distance is no longer an issue. Communion is a vertical experience where we experience Christ and we connect with him. But it's also a horizontal line where we connect with one another. It reminds me of the diverse gatherings that we saw at the Olympics earlier this summer. Athletes from all over the world speaking different languages believing in different things, but the thing that they had in common was their love of their sport. They were united despite their differences. Similarly, we come to the table from different backgrounds, from different experiences, but we are united in Christ. Whether we speak different languages, hold different political beliefs, or come from different cultures at the table. <clears throat> we are one body. One body in Christ. And then finally, communion, communion is to remember, is a reminder that we are living in anticipation of Christ's return. Luke 22, 18 says, Jesus told his disciples at the Last Supper that he wouldn't drink from the cup again until the kingdom of God comes in its fullness. When we gather for communion, we not only look back at what Jesus has done, but we also look forward to his return. As Paul writes in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Until he comes. Those are Jesus' words. That's what's in the Bible. Those aren't mine. Those aren't the United Methodists. This is what came out of this. Each time we come to the table, we're reminded of the hope that we have in Christ. That one day he will return. He will make all things right. It's a meal that points us to the future. A future where there will be no more suffering. No more death. No more hurt. And where we will feast with Christ 
in the fullness of his kingdom. This table, this meal, it's a gift. It's a place to remember Jesus' sacrifice, to celebrate the grace and forgiveness that we've received, and to share in fellowship with each other, and to look forward to a day when Christ, Christ will come again. As we come forward for communion today, come with open hearts. Come remembering the love that Christ poured out for you. Come celebrating the grace that covers all sin. Come knowing that you are not alone, but are part of a body of believers. And come with hope, anticipating the return of our Savior. I was going to have us do the invitation, the prayer, confession, and the full liturgy. But I don't think we need it today. It's scheduled. I've got it marked. I've got my book of worship. We're ready to go. But here's the thing. You know what the table is already. Do we really need the formal liturgy to know that Christ died for us? And that he came so that we would live in final victory? The words that we read today said that Jesus took the bread, he broke the bread, and he said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken and given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup and he said, take, drink. Drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant that's been shed for you and shed for many for the forgiveness of sins and the resurrection. Remember this as often as you drink it. <clears throat> Lord, I ask that you come and bless these elements of wafers and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ. Bless it. Nourish us. And let us remember all that you do for us every day, even in our darkest times, but also in a time when we have great glory. Amen. Amen. Wait. Okay. As we heard in the scripture this morning, Jesus doesn't say, only you get to come to the table today. He invites us all, every single one of us, because we are children of God. So come, feast, the table is set.
let us join together now with the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. celebrating <laughs> communion. May your eyes be open to all of its meanings. It's not just the death. It is a time for us to remember that we are one body, all invited into a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He wants a relationship with you, and if you don't know what that looks like, reach out to me. Let's talk. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, go and be a light to the whole world. One moment, one person at a time. Amen. Yeah.